Welcome to June 18th, 2021. Welcome to the Day Weather Podcast being brought to you by Chugwater Chili, the gourmet spice of Western life. Well, here it is. The Chugwater Chili cook-off is tomorrow in Chugwater, Wyoming. Chili tasting, ranch rodeo, live music, and more. It is a great time. It always is a good time at the Chugwater Chili cook-off. How can you beat a great summer event like this? Lots of yummy chili in the forecast, looking about as it should, upper 80s and lower 90s. So it's gonna be pretty warm in Chugwater. Slight chance of a few late day thunderstorms late in the day, but the chances are probably 20% or less. Big cool down coming by Monday, folks. A lot of you are gonna be shocked by how much cooler it's gonna feel by Monday. We're also gonna take a look at your weather photos. I haven't had a chance to put everybody's photos together till here recently, but we're gonna look at some of those. It's gonna be still very warm, but not as hot. By anybody's standards, today and Saturday will still be quite warm in many areas, but not the extreme heat of earlier in the week. It's gonna be Monday, and really late Sunday into Monday, where a lot of you are gonna notice the change. Snow, has he gone crazy? Yes, I've got snow in the forecast, believe it or not. We'll show you that. Nothing that's gonna have to be shoveled, but this to show you how crazy our weather can get in this region. We're gonna have a little bit of snow in some areas Sunday night, Monday. Now, rain and thunderstorm chances over some of the fire areas is coming. In fact, I think there's a really good pattern change coming to help the fires burning in parts of Montana and Northern Wyoming with this change in the weather that's coming. And also we're gonna have a discussion on sea surface temperatures out in the Pacific and La Nina and uh, what some of the new data and the new modeling is showing for late summer and early fall. First of all, let's go through some of the photos. You know, here's a great shot of that big thunderstorm that rolled through the Cheyenne area, bringing over two inches of rain and hail. Now, that happened on June 7th. Got a lot of great photos from thunderstorms around that time frame. There's one from Goshen County, beautiful thunderhead. Mamatis clouds, I got a lot of Mamatis cloud photos for some of those bigger thunderstorms. Here's another big thunderstorm from Nebraska. And then here's another great shot of Mamatis clouds near Pine Haven, near northeastern areas of Wyoming that uh, has occurred here over the last week. So don't forget to uh, send us your weather photos. If you get some good ones, send that to email podcast at dayweather.com. Now going forward, here we are looking at what is coming here over the next week or so. The big story here the last two weeks has been this big area of high pressure. But as we go through the course of the day today, the jet stream continues to sag more south out of Canada, knocking down that ridge, causing it to retreat more to the desert southwest. So temperatures are gonna be more moderate. There's still plenty of heat. In fact, you see this pink area, there's still a lot of warm in these pink areas, a lot of warm air. So for many areas of Colorado and Southern Wyoming into Kansas, parts of Western Nebraska, it's still gonna be really warm, but not as hot. The big cool down is up here, but the bigger cool down will expand. And this is what happens by Sunday afternoon. We have a high pressure ridge in Western Canada, a trough over central areas of Canada that's gonna drag a cold front through. And we're gonna see temperatures really cooling off Sunday here, cooling off everywhere as we go into this part of the nation here as we get into the second half of the weekend and into early next week. By the middle to the end of next week, high pressure is more elongated in the southern plains and the jet stream has pushed even further south allowing the air to be cooler. So you see the pink shrinking and going south of us. So this just means a more moderate, more typical summertime weather pattern coming our way. Look at the cold air that's gonna come in with this front on Tuesday and Monday, Monday into Tuesday. Notice we still have warmer than average temperatures along the West Coast and Western Canada, but along and east of the Continental Divide, look at all the blue and the purple. I mean, there is a big release of colder air that goes all the way from Greenland and across most areas of North America through Hudson Bay. So this is gonna bring a significant drop in temperatures early next week, turning off the heat or turning it down for many areas. Now, for this part of the US right here, the cold air is gonna lose some of its steam, although I do expect the cooler air to get all the way down to the Big Bend, Texas areas by Tuesday. So cooler weather is coming, and these are the forecasted high temperatures for Monday. These are highs, not lows. Look at the upslope areas of Wyoming here, 60s and 50s, 50s and 60s. Look at Denver, a forecasted high in Denver of 60 on Monday. You know, you're talking 30 degrees or more drop in temperature. And you can see the, the boundary 
between the cooler air and the hot air down south here. But even that's going to get a big push south, bringing relief from the heat wave to parts of Texas as well and making the wind blow in Texas again. But uh, this is certainly a big departure from where we've been. Now look at this pocket of cold air here over the Bighorn Mountains, the Beartooths, the Wind Rivers, and the Yellowstone Plateau. So for those of you who are going to be visiting Yellowstone Park, the higher Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming, and into the mountains of southwest Montana, well, cooler wet weather is coming. Look at this. This is the next 10 days. The precipitation forecast is quite impressive and quite encouraging for some of the real big drought areas occurring right now in Montana and northern and northeastern Wyoming and western South Dakota. There's going to be a fair amount of thunderstorm activity Sunday into Monday along the frontal boundary. Might even have some severe weather. So this is really good news for the Robertson Fire in northern Wyoming the fire activity near Pine Haven and the fire activity near Cody area, the Beartooth Mountain areas, this is great news. And yep, here is the snow I was talking about. The Bighorn Mountains, the Beartooth, parts of Yellowstone Park, the Wind Rivers. You know, look at this, even the Laramie Peak area. Late Sunday night and into Monday, some rain and snow mixed could occur. I would not be surprised if over Highway 16, Powder River Pass, gets a little bit of wet snow late Sunday night into early Monday. So quite the contrast. One thing to always remember about the weather folks is where there is one extreme, whether it's heat or cold, there is the other extreme that is upstream. So if you're gonna have extreme heat in one area, the opposite is happening somewhere else. And as the weather pattern changes, you bring in some of those extremes that were the opposite of what you just experienced. And really, this early in the summer season, you can still kind of get swings like this. So, yeah, cooler weather is coming for sure. And this is going to be a really, really big help for uh, the forest fire activity. But if you're headed to Yellowstone Park, if you're headed to the high country early next week, you got to remember this heat wave is going to take a back seat to this cold front. Looking long term, this is for the end of June into early July. Subtropical moisture still showing up on the models by that first weekend in July. So hopefully by the 4th of July weekend, southwestern Colorado, parts of New Mexico, Arizona, parts of Utah, southwestern areas of Wyoming, maybe, maybe we can get some of that early season monsoon moisture to come in. And that would really help out with precipitation chances and also kind of keep a little bit of a governor on temperatures. If you're going to get more monsoonal moisture and tropical moisture into more clouds, that helps ease his temperatures a little bit as well. Now, I want to talk a little bit about sea surface temperature conditions. These were sea surface temperature anomalies as of Monday of this week, and you can see there's no super dark blue or green, but this general area right here in the subtropical areas of the Pacific still has more blue here than orange. The La Nina is officially not in place right now. The La Nina advisory has been replaced by basically a neutral situation. And that's good news. If we were going to compare a year ago to where we were, look at this. This is when La Nina really started to form. See that intense area of green and some purple there? That's where sea surface temperatures really, really dropped. So it, there's quite a bit of difference in terms of that tropical area right here near the equator. La Nina was really strengthening at this time last year, and that's why we got so droughty. We're better than we were a year ago, but I want to show you something. Long term, the computer modeling is showing that La Nina is probably going to come back as we get into the fall and early winter. It doesn't mean it will continue into the spring of 2022, but these are sea surface temperature anomalies forecasted for August. Now you can see we basically stay in a neutral or very weak La Nina setup through August. So we're going to be in a very weak or neutral situation with La Nina for June, July, and August. But look what happens as we go forward. This is for December. Basically, we're back to La Nina status, maybe as early as November and into December. As we have said before in other podcasts, when you go through these 10 or 11 year solar cycles, you tend to have La Ninas that can go one to two years and be quite intense. That's why there are so many similarities to this summer and last summer to 2011 and 2012 when we had similar situations with heat and dryness across the western United States. So there's really no signs of an El Nino. In fact, we may slip back into a leak La Nina state by fall and early winter. We'll continue to monitor it for you as it may have a big impact on the overall climate of the western United States for the rest of 2021. 
And you can see by December there, those sea surface temperatures on the Canadian model. This is the European model. This is the Canadian model. And you can see what is really impressive on the Canadian model is it goes across all of the Pacific along the equator from South America all the way to northeast of Australia there. So uh, this is certainly a trend we don't want to see because we want La Nina to go away to get wetter. But as I've showed you here, it's weaker than was a year ago. So that's why we're somewhat more optimistic that the monsoon season is going to be better. Have yourself a great weekend, everybody. The cooler weather is on the way. We'll see you on Monday. Have yourself a great weekend, everyone.